For more than 30 years, she challenged powerful billionaire tech leaders, asking tough questions to Jeff Bezos, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, even cultural figures like Kim Kardashian. Now she takes us inside the world of tech, detailing what she encountered, sharing her perspective and the relationship she built with key players along the way. All in her memoir, Burn Book, a tech love story by Kara Swisher. Kara Swisher joins Thank us now in me. studio. Thank Congratulations Thank on you. the book, Out Thank Today. You. Out Today. What inspired you to do the book? Well, I had enough writing. No, no, I, I, I'm not retiring, but we were at a major inflection point with artificial general intelligence, and I thought we should talk about what came before, which mm. is largely what I covered, because we've got to sort of figure out what to do next, and I think, you know, you need to look at history to figure out what we did wrong, where the damage was, and it's important to reflect on on 30 years of massive growth. Uh, these people, when I met them, didn't have any money. Now they're the richest and most powerful people in the world. They continue to dominate and will be dominating next year. So how do you describe your relationship with technology? I love technology. That's why it's a tech love story. And some of it I don't like what they've done. I mean, one of the key quotes in the book is from Paul Virilio, which is when you invent the ship, you invent yeah, the shipwreck, that. right? When you invent electricity, you invent electrocution. Technology can be a great thing, can also be a weapon. And I think, unfortunately, too much of it has been weaponized uh, for, by, by malevolent people, especially. There have been some critics who have said that you got so cozy uh, with some of the big head honchos uh, that, that you were actually kind of late to the game and, and Not really at all. realizing. Not okay. at all. See, th these are people who didn't actually pay attention. In two th in, in the, in the two I wrote a book about AOL that was pretty tough and about the merger in 2001. In 2003, I was challenging Google on their monopoly. In 2005, I was challenging uh, Yahoo and what was happening there. Whatever the company was, it was always very tough interviews. In 2008, I did a, uh, 2010, I did an interview with Mark Zuckerberg in which he sweat because I was, we were pressing him so hard on privacy. We, we hit at Uber, we hit at Kleiner Perkins, we hit at, at all things deep. When I was a beat reporter, yes, like I was a beat reporter. You're not gonna say, this is a jerk. You just do the stories, right? Uh, and when I once I ran my own company, All Things D was quite tough um, on things. And I don't I, I, that I, I miss that particular thing. I get why people would do that, but you can you can be tough on people and also talk to them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's you know they're going to do that. Like, is it not good enough? Is Mama not mean enough <laughs> to these boys? Like, I, I I've called them to account when it's appropriate. When it's not, you can also like some of the technology. And I. One of the things I hate is you're either a fanboy or else you just be, are snarky at them. Mm. That's not helpful in any way. Is technology a threat to media or is it the other way around? Oh, technology has been a threat to media for a long time. Back when Craigslist came, I warned the Washington Post. I was like, this is a problem for your, your revenues. Uh, same thing with free news, right? That was a problem for all subscription businesses. Uh, what they thought was that, what media thought was that they didn't have to be good at technology. And that was a real problem because they thought the technologists would never want their businesses. But now we see, you know, streaming services, Amazon, uh, Apple, they're all in news. Facebook is one of the biggest distribution news. So we rely on them for distribution. We let them take over the key parts of the, of the media ecosystem, including digital advertising. And as print or you know, broadcast revenues decline, which is obvious to one and all, they didn't have a second plan. Like this was going to go on forever, and of course things change. And as you say, things change. What does the future look like when you compare it to the current structure of digital media? My worry is that this is artificial general intelligence is, is dominated by the big companies because it's very expensive. What happens when it starts to really control information, like it does now? And my worry is that technology companies will determine everything people see and watch mm. without independent news sources there. Then I think that's going to be a problem with artificial general intelligence as it starts to suck in all the data and spew it back out at us and charge us for it. Are you concerned that? in the world of technology in the end, in the future, there may only be two or three. Well, we're back to that, right? You know, I'm concerned that these are unaccountable people with billion, the richest and richest and most powerful people in the world running the richest and most powerful companies in the world with no accountability. And that's why I always, one of the, I live in Washington now, I stress a lot about regulation. I, I, I've created all kinds of companies, I'm a capitalist, but there's no regulation on tech whatsoever, specifically, none. None. And the one that, it, that applies to them gives them general immunity. So they get immunity and no liability. Wow, that's, I'll sign up for that. 
If there is something that keeps you up at night in the tech world, is that it? No. My my issue, everyone's like, are you scared AI is going to kill us, right? Or AI has been around for a while, but are you scared of that? No. I'm scared people using AI are going to kill us. I'm always scared of humans. That That is always a certainty, that they will take these tools and malevolent players will show up. And one of my issues with the tech people is they made these things in ways that they didn't they acted like bad people weren't going to use their tools the same as good people, and they didn't put safety into place. Harris Wisher, we thank you thank so you. much for your time, insight. Really appreciate it. Want to let our viewers know her book, Burn Book, a tech love story, is now available wherever books are sold. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.